Hey guys, this is going to be a video about uh, Sierra chart uh, tips and tricks. I think you'll, this will be useful for a lot of folks who are kind of newer to Sierra chart. Um, I do know that there have been a lot of uh, folks that I've talked to in the recent past that are um, moving to Sierra chart, and so I think this video. Although it won't be completely uh, basic, it will go over some tips and tricks that'll make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so one of the things that I think is uh, cool is that Sierra Chart allows you to uh, map your shortcuts in a lot of areas of the chart. Oh, just about, uh, like you can remap uh, the menu, uh, you can remap shortcuts and uh, things like that. So I find that incredibly useful. And what I mean about that is, okay, let's say you're in a chart and you right click your mouse, there's a menu here, okay? So as you learn, start to learn Sierra chart, you're gonna realize, start to realize that um, there are things within Sierra chart that maybe you want in this right click menu and things that you don't, okay? So, you know, you can see here that, you know, some of the things that I like <clears throat> to have in this right click uh, menu are here. But the way you go about changing that is you go into your global settings tab up here, okay? And then you go to customize chart shortcut menu, okay? And you have an available list here on the left side of menu items and it's organized by what the uh, the top menu bar it's organized in the same um, order uh, as the top menu bar so if you can find it up here uh, it's in the same order here right so you know you can just kind of scroll down right and you'll see there's all these shortcuts that you can add Right. And so all you do is select it, of course, hit add, and then put it in the order you want. Okay, so that's that's one thing, right? Um, and then another thing that you can do, uh, which I find, especially for drawing, uh, chart drawings, um, is go ahead and add a control bar, right, with all these buttons. So the way you do that is you go into your Windows uh, tab up here, all right, and then you click this drop down and then you find control bars. It's almost right at the bottom. And there's a bunch of different uh, control bars or eight of them that you can save, right? So what I'm using up here already is control bar four, right? So we'll add another one. We'll add uh, say control bar one, okay? As you can see, it's floating here, okay? You see that? I'm kind of grabbing it. So right click the top tab and then attach it to the top of your chart area, the left, the right, or even the bottom. Okay, so we'll attach this to the top. So there it is, control bar one is up here. Okay, to remove it, just right click it anywhere, float it, and then you see the X, get rid of it. Okay, so now you want to organize this according to your workflow. Um, and so what you do is just right click on it and then you hit customize control bar four and this is everything that's in my control bar and again uh, to add it you know you would just highlight what you want um, you, see, you can see the menu is not expanded here because there's quite a bit so you know you find the category that you think you want uh, and then you know, expand it and you get all these shortcuts right so if you want to say print something here you would add it It'll, oop. you know what I'm gonna cancel this go back because I put something out of order and I don't know exactly what I did so I'm gonna customize it all right so if we want to add the uh, print again let's see We want to add print, we want to add it somewhere near the top. Highlight here first, then highlight this, and then here's print near the top. You can move it up. 
Now, if you want to change the properties of what this looks like, okay, go to the property. Make sure it's highlighted. Select properties. Okay. Um, right now, it'll just use the caption, whatever the short short caption is for uh, print. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and hit OK. I kind of didn't think it was going to default to short caption. You have to apply it and then it'll apply the default settings. So anyway, go back, go to print, go to properties. Oh, I guess it does say use caption and yet it does use the image, which is interesting. Oh, it's because there is no caption here. So it's defaulting to the image. Ha. Okay. I've never added that before. So anyway, if you want to <clears throat> print from your chart, there it is. Okay. You can also um, create your own uh, uh, BMP uh, files. Just make sure they're the same uh, size, uh, you know, general, like as same as what's default within Sierra chart, right? And then um, let's say, you know, when you go in here to properties and you want to change, set your image. Okay, so it tells you what the file path is. See, uh, Sierra chart graphics and buttons. Okay, and then, you know, just go in there and save it. Um, like button 1000, underscore 1000 and 1001 are, are custom buttons for me. Okay, so um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. So, you know, kind of work with this. Um, you know, like uh, here, trend lines, right? I'm always drawing trend lines, so, you know, it's right there. And then here, the, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called exactly. Well, it's TC1, TC2, TC3, and TC4. It stands for something. Um, let me see. What is tool configuration. So what the tool configuration does is, let's say you're selecting a tool, right? And you, okay, so like in this instance, the tool configuration is defaulted right now to white, so it'll draw me a white trend line. Since I've selected the trend line, I can go over here to tool configuration. Uh, I've, I call it TC2, and then when you hover over it, it's red. Um, those are, again, settings in the button property. Just select that, and now your trend line will be whatever you save this tool configuration as. Um, that's what it'll save. So how you do that is let's say you're, I don't know, here in a, a like an arrow line. Okay. So again, it's defaulting to white and I want to make it say, I don't know, yellow. I want this to be something else. So I would configure the button and it tells you it's, you're configuring the tool configuration for the arrow configuration. Okay. So you would change the color. All right. And then, you know, I only have TC1, TC2, TC3, and TC4. You can add uh, multiple colors up here, like TC5, tool configuration 5, 6, 7. Add the buttons up here, and then for each drawing tool, save a configuration so that, you know, when you select your uh, drawing tool, you can change the color or the properties of it really fast. So anyway, going back to this, I could change it to blue. All right. And then, um, what is it on? It's on TC4. I can change the name. Okay. I can change a, a bunch of properties, the arrowhead, the length, the size, whether you uh, prompt to draw text at the end, all kinds of stuff and then hit save. So then next time I went in here, and I hit TC4, it would default this color to blue. Okay, so so I'll, I'll just show you here. We're, we're on the arrow, let's go red. All right, red, now we're still on the arrow. Let's go green, it's green. We can go yellow, yellow, okay? So, you know, and then buttons like this, the undo button. That's extremely useful for chart drawings as well. Or let's say you create a bunch of drawings and you're like, well, I want to only delete certain regions and I don't want to delete from last back to the first drawing. Well, you know, add a button here for erase chart drawing mode. 
what does that do? It selects everything that is a chart drawing and then you can just simply click on it and it'll get rid of it. Okay, so that is extremely useful for me. Okay, so things like that. So these tool configurations work for things like price zones. Okay, so you know, I use price zones all the time. All right, so how easy is that? Just to, um, you know, have this price zone in the color I want that quickly. Okay, I think, you know, this is, I don't know, this is a resistance zone. There you go. So in the tool configuration, you can set it to where, you know, it includes the high and if it is it centered uh, through the actual price or is it on top, right? You can configure all of that in the menu I just showed you in the tool configuration uh, menu. So that's another thing. This button here, all right, this lock, this is, I've got a three-year-old, okay, and he's well informed that he's not supposed to come into the office and touch anything, but in case he does, I've got a trading locked button. So this locks everything. So, you know, if I go through and try to place a trade, it rejects it. It says, nope, trading is locked. Okay, so it doesn't allow you to set a trade. All right, and now I'm unclicking that. So, you know, if I want to maximize my window, well, there you go. I just maximized. If I want to restore, there you go. So, you know, why do I do that? Because I get rid of the title bars in all my charts. How do you do that? That's really simple. Just go up to chart show title bar. Okay. See how that's ugly when a chart is connected to a chart book, right? It's like a, like a chart book canvas. You might think of it as it will default default to whatever your, uh, uh, windows, um, task manager, uh, color is. So I don't like that. So I get rid of that. Yeah. That's one of the pitfalls of Sierra chart using, the Windows architecture. So anyway, I get rid of that. But because I've get rid of that, there is no quick button here to maximize the screen. So yeah, could I, oops, let's see, I'm still selected on this price zone. So could I go to, all right, click on the chart, make sure you're selecting the chart by clicking on it. You can see here at the bar bottom and the chart uh, tabs that I am on the BART chart, right? Um, so you can see here that I'm selected there and then go to window and then, you know, you could maximize and minimize or restore or whatever. So I just add it as a button because I find that to be faster, right? Maximize and then restore done. Okay. So that's, that's an